Sometimes it's the little parts that just make a difference. So sometimes it's just the little things. The little things sometimes is what really makes a difference in an engine bay, and this is one of those parts. Now, I don't generally accept parts from companies unless it is a part that I personally would be willing to buy. Now, with that being said, I do wanna give a huge shout out to Killer B. Um, the guys over at Killer B sent us their new upper coolant expansion reservoir tank. Uh, I used the V1 version in my old 2007 STI. I loved it. It looked beautiful. It serves a purpose and it serves a function. We'll go into that in a minute. But just wanted to give a huge shout out over to Killer Bee for sending us their new V2 upper coolant reservoir. They're incredibly, incredibly simple to install. There, it's two bolts, some coolant lines, and that's pretty much it. Let me go over to the SCI engine bay. I'll show you guys what the point of this is because this does serve a purpose aside from just looking incredibly nice. I mean, if you're looking at your engine bay, this is your upper coolant expansion reservoir. It goes to the turbo, goes to the radiator, and in our case, it goes up to the air oil separator. Now that is going to be an important factor here in a moment, and we'll get into that in a second. But this one, it's just, it's big, it's bulky, it gets in the way, it's not needed to be that large. So what this does is it reduces the size of that upper coolant expansion tank. Now the reason that you'd wanna go to a smaller one, in our case, it's to free up a lot more room over here and it's gonna help prepare the car later down the road for when we go to do a rotated setup. So whenever you go to do a rotated turbo, the turbo sits more up here and then you have your big intake pipe that comes out. Now when the intake comes off the turbo and routes up this way, this guy right here will get in the way, it's gonna smack on the intake tube and it just makes it a little difficult to fit through this area. So I'll show you guys the actual size difference between this new one and that older one once we get it out, but I also do wanna go over the setup for where each barb goes on this guy. Now, when I said that this was my second time shooting this video, this was the reason why. So if you have an IAG air oil separator and your hose coming off of the air oil separator to the upper coolant expansion tank, the OEM one is trimmed too short, you're not gonna be able to reach this guy. So if you are looking at snagging one of these, make sure that you at least get a replacement hose from IAG. These things are cheap. I think it was $10, they sh it was two day shipping. I think with shipping it was maybe 18 bucks, but worth it, it'll be easy to swap on. It's just that one fitting to uh, get it on and off the air oil separator. But when it comes to the setup for the fittings on this upper coolant expansion guy, now it's going to mount up like so. These two smaller barbs that you see on the left side of it here will go to the radiator hoses. You have this one back plug, which is going to be the steel plug that goes down underneath the intake manifold. And then you have this upper plug, which then goes to the air oil separator if you are running one with coolant. If not, it will feed into the turbo. So really easy to set up. As you can see on that fitting, they come pre-done with a sealant on the fitting, so that way you don't have to put any PTFE tape or anything like that on these. Now, when it comes to installing it, super simple. I do recommend these hose clamp pliers. I will link them down in the description like always. Uh, you may need to trim some hoses like I'm going to have to do, so one of these small hose trimmer guys is not a bad move. Uh, you're just gonna need a 12 millimeter and then some, some pliers of some sort. I always prefer the angled needle nose ones. They're just my go-to plier whenever I go to do anything. I'm gonna get to pulling out this old upper coolant expansion tank. Once this guy is out of here, I do wanna come over and compare it outside of the car to this Killer B one because there's a significant difference in size here that I think is worth mentioning and worth taking a look at. I also wanna add, you're, going, you're probably gonna spill a little bit of coolant, so having a couple rags around you isn't a bad idea either. But let's get this thing out. I'll show you the hoses you gotta pull off, the two bolts you gotta pull off. Then we'll bring it back, we'll take a look at them both. So like I was saying, this thing's incredibly easy. We have one hose clamp here, which goes to our AOS. These two lines here, which go to the radiator. You have one underneath the bottom side of this guy, which goes down to the bottom side of the turbo. And you've got two 12 millimeter bolts holding it in place. So I'm gonna pull this guy out. I'm gonna clamp off all the lines that are gonna pee coolant everywhere. I'm also gonna pull off this old AOS line so that way we can get the new one on there. Then we'll compare this one over to the new Killer B one, which I'm excited for, I like that thing. Yeah. 
So the area is free. This is the line underneath of that upper coolant reservoir I was talking about where you kind of got to You got to be a little like finicky and quick with it. I do suggest laying down some paper towels down here so you're not getting coolant everywhere. And then this is the line that I had to swap out on the top of the AOS. Like as you can see, this one itself, it was just too short. It wasn't going to reach no matter what. So like I said, ordered a new line. It was only like 18 bucks shipped, not too bad. So just to recap, one line on the bottom, one line going from the AOS or going down to the turbo, however your setup is. You have two radiator lines that hang out over here. I just tucked them up underneath this tray so they're out of the way. And then uh, you just have the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold it down and it pulls right out. Now I kind of want to show you guys the updated Killer B version compared to this new one so you can see how much room you're actually saving here. Uh, so as you can see here, we have the OEM in my left hand and the Killer B in my right. Now, as you can see, there is a huge size comparison between these. So like I said, this one will help free up a lot of room if you are looking to go rotated. It's not required, but I do highly suggest it. It will help you out in the long run when it comes to fitment. This one also comes in a color, a couple different colors. I prefer the wrinkle black, but they also have wrinkle red and raw aluminum on these, which both look pretty good in my opinion. Now, when it comes to port locations on both of these, as you can see on the OEM one, right here these two ports are offset next to each other you've got the one going up to the air oil separator and then the one going back down to back down through the intake manifold now on the killer b1 it's a little bit different so i broke this down into sizing to make it a lot easier for everyone but you have the one stainless steel fitting on the lower rear side of the upper reservoir you've got three of these brass ports you've got a small a medium and a large now the small one is going to go on the forward most side of it on the top the medium size one will go right underneath of that and then the large largest of the brass fittings will just go on the side of it right here. So that's pretty much it for this. I'm gonna go get this installed on the car. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put this lower port on first. Now you may need to trim the OEM hose in order to get this right. Uh, remember, do it incrementally in small steps. Don't just go a full send with uh, just cutting it three inches down. Once that's connected, we'll do the two 12 millimeter bolts right here to bolt it to the intake manifold and then we'll just get these last couple ports on. I'm gonna have to trim this line because I do have that new IAG one that I just put on. So let's get this guy in the car. Now that we've got it installed, I'm gonna get the car burped. After the car is burped, then we will, uh, well, after the car is burped, I'll bring the camera up, I'll show you guys what it looks like, but this definitely frees up so much room. Jesus, I love it. Yo, it looks so good. It frees up so much room. I love this thing. So the old one used to come out to about right out here and now we're like super tucked in. Now, one thing that I like about the V2 that they have is you can swap all of these fittings over to AN fittings if you wanted to. So that way, if you're doing like your own custom coolant setup or anything like that, you can just use AN, which I love AN fittings. But overall, there's just, there's so much more room in there. I'm extremely happy with this. Thank you so much, Killer B. You guys are awesome. It goes nicely with the oil pickup, the headers, the uh, oil pan, all the other Killer B goodies that we got on the car. So I'm happy with it. There's a nice Killer B logo here on the back side, but 10 out of 10, I would recommend this to anyone. Like I said, I'm not gonna take parts from a company if I personally wouldn't purchase them or uh, buy it. So 10 out of 10, I'm digging it. Super easy to install also. So like I said, super happy with that upper coolant reservoir. It definitely frees up a lot more room and we are not stuck with this gigantic thing in there anymore. So if it is something that you guys are looking to do, uh, swing over to Killer Bee's website. I know they just had a sale going on recently. Don't know if they have any others going on, but if not, it's definitely worth it. I think it comes out to about $168 or so. But if you do plan on going rotated in the future, that is a small part that you're gonna need to be able to do so. But 10 out of 10. I like it, that's all that matters. So that wraps it up, easy install today. It really helps kind of pull the engine bay together after everything else that we've done in the car to help minimize the footprint of all the accessories that go into the engine. So digging it, digging it. With that, that's really gonna wrap it up on this one. So if you guys liked the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it blue like the Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, which you should be, because uh, 
still got some more STI parts coming up. We got the turbo set up for the BRZ. You know, you know the spiel. I do this at the end of every video. Subscribe if you want to. I'll put it in one of the corners. Don't know which one. But with that, I appreciate all the time you guys spent here with me. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.